Welcome to church this morning. I'm going to invite you to stand up on your feet. It's going to be a good day today. If we have any guests in the place, I want to welcome you. My name is Pastor Wes. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and we're just so excited you would join us in service. It's going to be a good day. We have a lot planned today. Um, we're, going to, we're about to jump into worship here, and um, I just try to try to bring us something from the Word about worship and a dynamic of worship. And I just felt like the Lord uh, was saying the word safety today. Safety, a safe space. And I was just praying about it. And uh, it, this says this in Isaiah 25, verse 1. It says, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed from old, faithful, and sure. I love that. We're going to praise his name. He's the, he's the author of the beginning and the end. And he's brought us here for this time. And his word is a faithful and sure. I love that part. And it says this. So when we worship the Lord and we exalt him and we have that posture, it says this. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy and its distress, it, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. Come on, we're in Texas. We need a shade from the heat. He's a shelter in the storm, a shade in the heat. And it says this, the breath of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall. And I just had this picture of as we worship the Lord and we come into his presence and we let his presence surround us, it's like he puts up a wall. And as the storms come, the, the storms hit the wall. They don't hit us, right? It's just like the heat. If we can get in the shade, the heat doesn't hit us. You know what I mean? So as we worship the Lord, that's what he promises to do. He promises to, to protect us and put up a wall to keep us cool, to keep us dry, to keep us from the ruthless storms that are coming. Amen? So God, we just worship you today, God. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, God, for, for putting up shade for us, God. We're going we're gonna to come into your shade, God, from the heat. And Lord, uh, uh, as we worship you, God, let the storms around us become so peaceful. Like you, you put up walls around us, God, to keep the storms out, God, and keep us fixated on you, God. Because you are faithful, you are wonderful, you are true. God, we just worship you today. Come on, church, let's worship him today.
Trust you, I don't 
Oh, 
you say it's only you alone it's only you alone lay your hands down at your feet oh we say
Father, we come this morning to the altar to say oh, that we're grateful that you're enough, God, that you're holy, that you are the lamb that was slain, that is worthy to open the scroll. Who is worthy? The lamb. So thank you for sending your son, God. Give us the eyes of Jesus. And that's what I pray today for our house, Father, that we would begin to have your heart because it's your kindness that leads to repentance, Father. So I pray that people uh, encounter you today. And what that encounter looks like, God, is that they encounter your love and your kindness, God, and it transforms their life forever. Once they come into proximity of the kindness and the compassion that you have for them, God, it changes their life forever, and it'll never be the same, God. So I pray before we can change the world, Father, we have to be changed here. So I pray for the spirit and the heart of, of Jesus, the way that he saw people, God, the way he would stop for them, Father, and, and he, he would carry your Holy Spirit that he left with us, the same Holy Spirit that transforms lives, Father. I pray that we would get a, a revelation of that today and that you would transform us from the inside out, God. It's a heart posture, Father. Transform our hearts today, God. You're worthy. We're thankful. And as a church, God, we come together in a united voice and set aside time on a Sunday to say, You are worth it, God. We're grateful. Thank you, Jesus. We pray all this in your mighty name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can be seated. God is good. Y'all say what's up to your neighbors as you sit. We're going to continue uh, worshiping this morning through our tithes and our offerings. We give because we believe exactly like King David said in Chronicles. He says, everything's yours, God. And the, the least we can do is turn around and give back to what you have so graciously given us and our people. Who are we that you would set aside so much uh, for us and I think it has a lot more to do with our heart posture than it does the amount. And it's something you guys hear me say often. Like, it's not about how much you give, it's about giving, period, and stewarding what God has given you, even if it's a lot or even if it's a little. It's about the heart behind it. So, anyway, I'm going to pray over our offering today as our ushers come down. And if you came to give today, there's uh, four ways you can do that. You can give in the offering right here with the traditional style. There's drop boxes in the hallways or you can give online at lschurch.tv. You can also text to give that number. All right, join me as I pray over our offering this morning. Father God, thank you for um, the privilege and the ability, God, to be able to have uh, resources to begin with, Father. It all comes from you, God, so, so, uh, so thank you for the opportunity to be able to sow back into your kingdom, to sow back into your people, to sow back into what you're doing here on the earth, God, for us to be able to be a part of that. We even consider that a privilege, God, so thank you for the opportunity, God. Bless the seeds sown in this house today, God, that they would go exactly uh, where you want them to go, Father, and they would grow far beyond what we could do with our own hands. God, we put it in your hands that you're a God of multiplication. You can take something small and like bread and break it and feed 5,000, 15,000 people with it, God, no problem. So we, we pray that, that blessing of multiplication over all the seeds sown in this house today, God, we're grateful as always. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. All right, we're going to watch the announcements, but before we do, they're actually going to they're gonna say this in the announcements, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, at the end of service today, we, we do a thing in a couple of weeks, we're a couple of weeks out, it's called VBS, it's a vacation Bible school, if you, if you don't know what that is, yeah, it's awesome, it's a chance for us to open our doors and we invite the community in, and I, I love it, it it's, it's one of my favorite things. Anyway, if you hang out after service today, I'm gonna, we're going to do what's called a VBS rally, where it just sort of explains what VBS even is, and what our church does, and how we get behind it, and how we rally together. Um, it's going to be about 15 minutes long, probably, so if you guys have the dexterity, um, hang out, and I would love to talk to you and give you a little presentation of what it is and give you a better idea so that you can maybe get involved somehow. And it could be anywhere from, there's lots of ways to get involved, and I'll go over all that. So I just wanted to personally invite you, if you could stick around just a little bit, I know you're hungry, so am I, but if you could hang out and just listen, um, I would love for you to be a part of it, and even at the very least, I just would like you to know about it. That's it. So you guys are awesome. Uh, check out the video announcements. 
Good morning, church. We have a few announcements for you. Family service is next week, and I'm going to be preaching in front of our VBS set. And we're inviting all the LS kids, first through fifth, into service. So bring the kids with you. And we'll have nursery and preschool open for all of our littlest members. After service, we will have VBS training and setup. So if you're volunteering for VBS, please plan to attend. We'll have lunch in the bookstore, then we'll head back into the auditorium for training. Volunteers can also pick up their shirts and lanyards. Can't wait to see you there. This month's impact offering is for Alvin ISD's Operation Backpack, which makes sure more than 4,000 kids have the school supplies they need. So we're gonna be taking up a special offering on July 28th and we're gonna be holding a supply drive, uh, which begins next Sunday. We're gonna be collecting everything from backpacks, glue sticks, plastic folders, highlighters, composition notebooks, um, and drop off supplies in the lobby before and after service. And the donation booth will be up all month long. And those are all of our announcements. Make sure to check in with the QR code and let us know you're here. If this is your first time, please come and visit us at the Start Here booth. There's a group of people there that would love to meet you. Enjoy service. Hey church, as many of you guys know, we've been hard at work over at Victory Camp this summer, our student camp ministry. And we wanted to bring you guys an update on what God has been up to through our summer camp sessions over at Victory Camp. We've been honored and excited to be a part of what God has been doing as he reaches the next generation. Now, of course, there's fun stuff at camp or the pool, the rec games, the zip line, and definitely we are so grateful to be able to have fun with these kids and build love and community with them, but even more grateful to be a part of the life change and transformation inside them that lasts forever. And that's really why we made this video. We wanted to pause and take a minute to testify and tell you what the Lord is doing at Victory Camp. After five camps in four weeks, God has taken over hearts. And the same kids that enter this camp one way are encountering the compassion and love of Jesus and leaving changed forever. The very first services we do are for staff training and spiritual preparation. Exclusive services focused on getting our camp staff filled up with the Spirit of God and His Word. There were times of ministry where staff began to lay hands on each other and pray that the Holy Spirit would fill the room and prepare their hearts for the camp to come. Then right after we filled up, we poured out. The first week of day camp began and the foundation of God in these young lives began to take root. Seeds were planted and so many were shown love, joy, peace, and acceptance that the Lord has for them. Through songs and dancing, the character of God was revealed in these young children. And that powerful first week was followed by two weeks of kids' overnight camps. God brought us intimate moments through worship and connection throughout our devotionals. He showed up and met them right where they were. The children responded to the call of praying for one another, and they opened their hearts and minds for God to speak to them. Their fresh love for God allowed them to be receptive and to believe in the miracles that He has done and is still doing. The last wave was junior high and high school camp. The hunger and expectation that God was moving was so strong. The realities in life outside of camp held real problems and they were in need of a real answer and they got to find it in the love of the Lord. Many experienced the Lord for the first time and they found out that they were surrounded by a community of believers that united and stood together in faith. The revelation of a life filled with purpose with God brought so much joy and hope that every night they leaned in more and more and their faith grew and filled the room. Church, we wanna thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support, your contribution. We wanted to let you know that you are a part of what God has been doing this summer. Chains are falling. Generational curses have been broken. False identities have been washed away. Prodigals are returning. The lost have been found and lives have been changed forever. God is moving and the best part is he ain't done yet.
<laughs> they were gatekeeping me and didn't let me watch it. And so I'm like trying to emotionally process just how good God is and how amazing it is that we serve such a good, kind, loving father. I, I think there's many um, ways to think that this generation is so hard to reach and they're so far gone. But the truth is about this generation is they are looking for and need a savior more than ever. And their hearts are so hungry. And I like how they finished. He ain't done yet. So God is good. And we wanted to share that video with you guys just to say thank you to our church. It's not often that um, churches uh, get to rally behind their youth as much as we've been able to. I, I think the writing's kind of been on the wall. It's this whole entire campus is really built around the ministry of the next generation and the sacrifices it takes to reach them. But man, is it worth it. And so thank you, church. We are honored and proud. And man, God is so good. God is so good. Whew, now I have to follow that. Thank you, Kate. And he was looking for tears. He's like, I want you to cry. I'm like, well, great, because now I messed up my makeup here. But um, I actually am excited about today's message. I, I feel like in the process of summer and the process of one thing I get to do in the summertime is have so many conversations with the youth and young adults. This uh, message was kind of writing itself as I was giving lots of helpful tips. And so I, I feel good about it. I actually was thinking about you guys this morning and, and I have a question for you guys. How many of you really want to be used by God and fulfill the purpose of God in your life wholly and completely? How many of you really want to do that? So this is really good then, because I actually think this message then is for everyone in this room. And what I, I want to talk about today is a conversation that sometimes we don't talk a lot in church because I think it can get misconstrued. But I want to talk about the season of testing the, the sometimes the testing that goes before promotion. If you've uh, been uh, in church long or you've just been alive long, you tend to go through seasons where you're going, God, come on, what's next, what's next? We don't know what's going on. And I, I find a lot of conversations with people with a lot of frustration. And the season that kind of keeps coming up is this season of, of preparation, the season to prepare for the promotion, to prepare for the next season. I don't even love to use the word promotion because I think even in that it has a self-elevated idea behind it. But really as we go through our lives and going, God, I want you to intervene in my life and God, I want you to use me more. There's some seasons of, of testing that, that goes with that. And, and I really feel like even for, for actually this specific time, for this specific house, it's something I feel like God really began to show me this year that this was the year that we would put the house in order. And so for sure, we've been trying to clean and move things around and fix things up around the campus. And as much as I do think it's something in the natural and it's about stewardship and stewarding the resources God gives us, I think it has a lot to do with putting this house in order the house that we invite him to co-inhabit, to live inside of us, with us each and every day about putting this specific house in, in order. But I, I really do want to be careful as I, as I jump into this topic. There's some things I feel like we have to know to ground us in this idea of testing. Uh, one of those things is that God is a good and loving father. He's a good father. I don't know if you've had a good father. Some of us have had good fathers in this room. Well, whatever you think your father's good, God is a bazillion times better farther than that. He's loving and he cares about us. And sometimes it's easy to take a message like this and go, oh, God's, God's testing me. He's trying to punish me. No, 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 no. God is a, a good father, okay? Second thing I think is important for us to know is just because we're going through something doesn't mean God put that there. God doesn't bring the calamity and the chaos but he is good enough that can he allow it to carve you. This morning, we, we sang about that a little bit, going through the new wine, God crushes us, make us better. And so it's not that God brings all these things in our life because he's wanting to crush us, but God does use every opportunity to teach you and show you and craft you into the woman or man of God that he's called you to be. So, so he doesn't bring the calamity, but he does do the carving. I think it's important that we also know what is and isn't a test. Sometimes in our life, there are horrible things that happen to us, things that are abusive in nature, things that are crazy. And to sit there and go, well, the Lord's testing me. I just got to get out of this. No, no, no. That's, that's not a test. That's something really, really difficult. And the Lord wants to rescue you. It's, it's not a test. 
But there are a lot of things in our life that are simple, and sometimes in our minds they're even more exaggerated because it's affecting us. And it's an opportunity for God to really begin to test us and see where our, our character is really at. And so today, I, I actually, if I hope I can get there, this was actually what my message was built on, was uh, thinking about some video game analogies that's been happening in my household. So I originally titled this message, Beat the Level, the Process for Promotion. And it spoke to me directly. I shared this with you guys a few weeks ago that I was listening to a pastor online and he was talking about going through a season and it was just difficult and he just kept murmuring and complaining and he didn't have any faith and he was so upset and he just kept going round and round and round. And all of a sudden he was complaining to the Lord and the Lord said to him, all right, that's one more year. And I'll tell you what, that spoke to me so much. But what it did do for me is it began to encourage me to go, God, there's so many things in my life that I might be stuck here just like the children of Israel because I'm murmuring and complaining and I'm stuck right here in the wilderness when you're ready to promote me, but you're just kind of waiting on me. And there's something for me in knowing that that sometimes makes the test maybe a little bit easier or maybe a little bit comforting. And so today is going to be a little bit of a difficult message, but my goal is to comfort you and excite you for the test, right? How many of you love taking tests, right? This is going to be really great. Okay, I'm excited. Because really, what it made me originally think about was school test, right? Why do we take tests at school? It's for mastery of content. Do we have the lessons that we need to know, and do we understand it well enough to be promoted to the next level? So we test all these different, different skill sets to see if we are ready for the next level. Let me tell you something, you guys. In our life and in our walk with the Lord, for the next level that God has called us to, we will need a stronger skill set. And let me give you some advice. If you're struggling right now with where you are, don't keep praying for the Lord to promote you even more because it actually gets harder at times, right? In the season that he has us in, it's actually a season of grace. It's a season where we can learn right where you are. If you think about grade school, it goes from kindergarten to 12th grade, right? It continually gets a little bit harder every year. And when you're in kindergarten, you hate kindergarten and you hate nap time. I don't know about you guys, I'd go back to kindergarten any day of the week. (laughs) Nap time and snack time, I'm in 100%. And I think that's what the Lord is always trying to show us. Like right where you are is a journey. Right where you are is a season that you can learn and you can grow. And when you're ready, we can go to the next level. So so testing gets us ready for promotion. Testing is a really good way to see if there's any holes in your knowledge and skills. Right? We test different concepts and we see, well, it's the same way in our faith. It only takes a few minutes of hanging out with somebody. You can find pretty quickly where they've got some holes in their spiritual knowledge and skills, right? We all have these buttons and these different triggers. You just say this one thing and we go, oh, that's probably a weak spot for them in their knowledge and skills. That's what testing does. Um, Another thing it does is it really does uh, determine if the foundation that you have laid is is ready for the next level. So, So it's a process. In school, the process sometimes is you go from pre-K to 12th grade, and there's, there's written tests that you go through in that process. I, I wish it was like that for, for life, but it's, there's not really written test. There's like life test. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the life test that we go through. In fact, in the kingdom, oftentimes, and it's all over the Bible, it talks about the test that is the purification process by fire. It talks about how it go and you, and you purify gold and you continue to sift the gold and you put it back through the fire. And the more you put the gold through the fire, the more it burns up all the impurity so that that, fi- that gold can become pure, pure gold at the purest form. That is really what life is, especially when we're, when we're walking with the Lord. It's, it says this in Isaiah. It says, behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. That says, I'm testing you when things don't go the way you want them to. When everything doesn't go as planned and everything's not all hunky-dory and happy-go-lucky, how are things in your life when you don't like your life? How are things in your life when you don't think I'm moving fast enough? 
How are things in your life when you don't think that situation over there is quite fair? How are things in your life when you don't feel like anybody sees you or sees what you're doing? How does it look like I test you through the furnace of affliction? And let me tell you what, guys, God isn't going around testing people so he can figure out who he can burn. If you fail the test, you just stay in kindergarten a little longer. He doesn't burn you down for that. He, he's gentle, and he's kind, and he's teaching us, so he's looking for people to test. But this is why he's looking, because he's actually looking for people to promote. He's looking for people to empower with his, his power and his grace and to be able to go and do things for the Lord. He wants to give his influence to people, his power, his provision, all of these things. He's looking. In Second Chronicles, it says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole or earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. He's looking for people. He's looking for soldiers. He's testing us and he's going, man, I need you. I need to promote you. I need more from you. I need to give you more influence. I need to give you more resources. I need to give you this. I need to, because I need, I need people, soldiers in my army of the Lord. I need you guys. But he's going, but what are you doing with what you have right now? What are you doing when the season isn't always going the way things you think they should go? And, 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 we, and we look at it, and, and I know he needs soldiers ASAP, but it would be cruel of a good father to put children on a battlefield. It would be cruel of the father to do that. So what he's doing is he's not punishing us, he's protecting us, and he's going, I'm not going to give you more than you can handle until you're ready. I'm testing, are you, are you, are you ready? And if, we're, and if we're honest, this is sad, but I really do think Christians are really immature sometimes. Not that non-Christians aren't immature, I think we all are, right? Sometimes we can be so immature or sometimes so inexperienced in, in what we think we know or what we think the answer is or we think is happening. Sometimes we just are. I, I found this message by my dad I have all these binders of messages, and one day I'll preach it. But the message title just caught my eye, and it said this. It said, for God's sake, grow up. <laughs> and I thought, man, we need to. For the sake of God, the body of Christ needs to start growing up. We need to start recognizing that some of our behaviors are childish. Some of the things that we're still getting upset about are childish. Some of the things that we just keep again and again and again, it's childish. It's childish, and the Lord is saying, I need you guys to, to grow up a little bit. And, and we spend so much time, I mean, we've talked about it even this past few months here. Can, can we trust God? Yes, God is trusted. We can trust God, we can trust God, we can trust God. But how about this? Can God trust you? Does God see us trustworthy? All of these expectations we have for him, you better be faithful, you better see me, you better know the hairs on my head, you better do this, you better do that. But can he ask the same of us? What happens when he comes looking for the ones who are faithful? The ones whose hearts are completely pure. The, those who forgive easily. Those who, who work towards healing, and not, not, not strife and bitterness and betrayal, but instead healing and wholeness. He's looking for, for people that, that he can trust too. And here's something that I think is important to know. Is that God loves us all the same, but he doesn't trust us all the same. That's a, that's a big pill to swallow, but I think it's a good one. Let's swallow it, right? The, the endless love that the Lord has for us, there is no end for the love he has for us, and he loves everybody. Think of the person you really, really, really hate. He loves them just as much as he loves you, okay? Just, just go ahead and understand that, but in the same way, the trust that he has for us is built by how we handle what he has given us, right? The trust is a part that's different for everybody. And God cannot really trust you until he tests you. And that's ironic because we've actually said the same thing about him this exact month. We've talked about this. We said we cannot learn to, to trust God until we really test God. And the thing is, is every time that we test God, he shows up. He shows up as good. He shows up as faithful. He shows up as enduring. But, but can God really, really tr trust us? So what happens? We're, we're tested. 
And like I said, it's a hard one to talk about because I don't even like thinking about it. But you know what? You know that Jesus was tested? And he was perfect. Here he was, come down, fully man, fully God, and he is tested to see if he is ready. It says this in Matthew. It says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I love this uh, translation. It says, to experience the ordeal of testing by the accuser. How many of you guys feel like you experienced the ordeal of testing by the accuser? It says that the Holy Spirit led Jesus to this. Then it says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry, then the tempter came. So let me put this in, let me put this in perspective here. He wasn't tested until he was starving and sleep deprived and been alone for, for all 40 days. How many of you guys are gonna be at your best right then? I mean, if you're gonna test me, there's some things. I need a good nap, right? I gotta have everything going my way. I've gotta have a good outfit. I gotta have a nap. I've gotta have really good food that day. I can't be hungry. And if the sun's gotta be shining, and if everything is right, I might respond in love. But if any of those factors are off, who really knows? But here Jesus is, he is fully naturally depleted of everything that we think we have to have to behave ourselves. He's fully naturally depleted, and then he's spiritually tested. And the enemy takes him through these, these series of testings. The, the first one, he says, if you're the son of God, then command these stones to become bread. He's saying, if you're the son, aren't you hungry, Jesus? I mean, that looks real good, doesn't it? Look at those chips and that salsa at Chili's. That looks real good. Right? He's tempting. He's tempting. What's he doing? He's using his own flesh. He's, he's going, are you weak in your flesh? The enemy is tempting. Then, then, he, then he goes and he says this. He says, well, if you're so great, if you're really the son of God, then you throw yourself down so the angels will come and save you. What's he testing? He's testing his power. He's testing his ego. Man, if you're really that awesome, you should be able to this. Man, if I was you, I'd be able to... Or how about this one? I've heard this one a lot lately. They, that was my idea, right? It's, it's this pride, like, I am so smart. I am so this. I am so that. So he says here, he says, let's test, let's test the power. Then third test, the enemy comes again. He says, um, all of these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. What's he testing with now? He's testing his motives. He's testing his selfish ambition. Would, would Jesus lay down everything so that so the accuser would glorify him? He was testing the Lord. And the tests that we go through really aren't much different than that. We have just our flesh and the desires of this world tested. Our ego and pride gets tested. Sometimes our motives get tested. Lord, I just, I'm just here for you, Lord. I just want to see you move, Lord. All, not me, all you, all, all you, not me. Two seconds later, nobody saw me. I didn't get to do that. Nobody said hi to me today, right? I'll come, I'll come to church, but no one says hi to me. Maybe we come to church for him, not us, right? Sometimes we get it so, so backwards at times. So Jesus goes through this testing, but the thing is, is, is everyone gets tested, if I had time today, I'd love to sit through the, the life of, of Joseph because you could almost see Joseph go through a series of testing for God to prepare him for the man of God he would need him to be years and years later. It, it says this in the Psalms. It says, then he sent someone to Egypt ahead of them. So he sent up one person ahead of the children of Israel to save them all years and years and years from now. He sent one person ahead of them. It was Joseph who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with fetters and they placed his neck in an iron collar until the time came to fulfill his dreams. The Lord tested Joseph's character. Joseph was tested. David was tested. Moses was tested. Paul was tested. Peter was tested. We're tested. But being tested doesn't mean that something's wrong. It means that something's right. It means the Lord has chosen us and sees us and wants to prepare us for, for what's next. There, there is a season of testing. And I really don't want to spend too much time on this today, but I wanted to go through just for a few minutes some areas of testing that I think sometimes we go through and don't realize we're in a test. 
Uh, one of those areas, and I think Pastor James does such a good job because he talks to the men about this a lot. It's, it's some of the natural testings on, on just how do we handle the life God's given us? What's our work ethic like? Do we show up when we say we're gonna show up? Are we disciplined at our work? Do we do excellence in what we do? Do, do we give our best? Do we do things in a timely manner? Do we take care of the things that God's given us? What, are we, what do we look like? Or are we undisciplined sometimes? Or maybe we're too self-important to take care of the things around us. And here's what it says in Colossians. It says, whatever you do, work it with all your heart as for working to the Lord or human masters. And these tests, there's not like a certified number of tests. These are just some of the tests and there's not an order. But just for reference of my notes, so, so test one, do you do everything you do as unto the Lord? I feel like we have room to grow. I know I do. <laughs> test two, a test of our motives. The Lord is looking for the heart. He's looking for motives. Where's your heart at? Where's your heart at when somebody else gets the promotion that you want? Where's your heart at when someone else gets recognized and not you? Where's your heart at when it doesn't make you the best in the room? Where, where, where's your heart at? And sometimes the Lord will hide you before he exalts you. What do you do in the season that you're hidden and nobody seems to recognize you? Nobody seems to validate you or compliment you or brag on you. What do you do in that season? In Deuteronomy, talking about the children of Israel, it says, and you shall remember that the Lord your God has led you all these the way, these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you and to know what's in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, he allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know nor your fathers knew, that he might make you known that man shall not live by bread alone, but that man lives on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he says, took you into the wilderness. And we, it was actually from, from Egypt to the promised land was a pretty good straight shot. It was just, it was not that long to get there. So he gets them in the wilderness and begins to test them. And all of a sudden there was all of this stuff that was still in them. They hadn't let go of Egypt. They weren't ready for the promised land. Their mindset was Egypt. So we begin to test them. They didn't have manna, they didn't have food. So he gave them manna, he gave them all these things. And what did they do? They murmured and complained for 40 years in the wilderness. In fact, for that generation, not one of those generations except for two of them ended up making it to the promised land because they just couldn't pass the test. They couldn't pass the test. A third test that we sometimes go through is the test of discouragement and disappointment. I think we've all lived through this test when things don't go as you thought they would grow or go or you're trying your very best and you really are having, like I'm on a good season, I've really been giving it my best and then this whole thing falls through. It says this in Galatians, it says, and don't let us grow weary while doing good for in due season, we shall reap if we don't lose heart. This is really the, the test of faithfulness. Can you be faithful when you're discouraged and disappointed? Faithfulness isn't just, okay, well then I'm gonna keep doing what I'm supposed to do. No, actually faithfulness is doing things with excellence and continuing to do what you do, regardless of the discouragement, regardless of the disappointment. Fourth thing, betrayal. What do you do when betrayal happens? Betrayal is a tough one because betrayal really only hurts when it happens from the people you would least expect it to happen from, right? The people that you knew would do that, you would know that of them, but if it's betrayal, because you would never expect it. And because of that, it hurts a lot more. Another one is jealousy, right? Not fair. I think we live in a not fair culture. That's not fair and that's not fair, fair. It says this in James. It says, but if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. That's what it says. For whatever... Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. It's jealousy, it's, it's envy, it's all of that. That goes right along with the sixth one I have, it is righteousness. Sometimes we can get this, this attitude of righteousness that we're just better than people. And we've worked so hard at our faith, we want everybody to work as hard as us. And sometimes it destroys us, it destroys the church. 
Uh, another one I have is, is power, ego, fame, right? That, that, that destroys this ego. It says this in Proverbs. It says, fire is the way to test the purity of silver and gold, but the character of a man is tested by giving him a measure of fame. You give a man a measure of fame and you see what they do with it. I, I, one of my points is, is blessings. I think it's the same way with blessings, When God begins to bless you, does that make you go closer to the Lord or farther away? What do you do with the test of blessing, not just the test of of burdens? Another one's the test of integrity. What do we do when no one's looking? And then the last one, I feel like this is the one for me in the season I've really been going through, is, is it really a test of faith? Can you really trust the Lord in each and every season? And, and if you're in a season, you're in a level one faith season, so you gotta, you gotta have faith for what you're doing right now on the small level. If God promotes you, don't you think you're gonna need more faith for the next level that you're going into? Pastor Russ and I were talking about this morning. We're like, you know, we get so caught up in this, this idea that if we're comfortable and we're in control, things are the way it should be. We're in actuality, the Lord has invited us into a journey of constantly living in faith constantly living in a system where we rely on the Lord for everything and he meets our needs. And he's constantly challenging us, constantly giving us dreams or ideas or things outside of our reach, constantly leaving us in a place that without God, we can't do it. I don't, I don't think I shared this last week, but I, but I heard this thing once that said that how much is uh, too much of anything? It says, well, well, then you don't have to rely on God anymore. So how much is too much money when you stop having to rely on God for it? right? How much is too much influence when you don't have to rely on God for it? How much is too much X, right? When you don't have to rely on God. One more I added in my notes while I was walking out. This is number 11, it's bonus content. I think sometimes one of the tests that we have to pass is the, the pick me test. Our youth knows that terminology. Pick me, right? It's all about me. I just want to focus on me. It's got to be about me. It's got about me. It's got about me. And sometimes we're just going, Lord, I want to do everything for you, but we're still just making it all about us. We got to go through the test of going, man, I get to the place in my life that it's not really all about me. When we sing the songs, Lord, it's all about you. We really mean it's all about you. And that's where the real freedom is found when we get to the place in our life when things aren't really about us anymore. That's when we're, what's binding us is us. I'm so offended, I'm so tired, I'm so mad, I'm so unforgiving, I'm so upset, I'm so discouraged, I'm so depressed, I'm so upset, I'm so jealous, I'm so, it's that. It's the the I problems, right? And sometimes our biggest problem that's standing in between us and the Lord is us. We keep making it so much about us when when we make it all about him, that's where our freedom is found. It's not how hard I pray, how hard I worship, how hard. It's going, no, God is just so good that he meets me here every day because that's how good he is. It's about, it's about him. So some of these tests are, are the tests that, that we go through. And I want to spend a few times just kind of breaking it down. And I'm sure as you're sitting there, you might be going, ah, I, I know of something else. But, but I think that, that knowing sometimes is half the battle. It's, it says this in 1 Peter. It says, So be truly glad. See, I told you, you must be excited about the test. Peter says, so be truly glad because there's a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure these trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire test and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it would bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Christ Jesus is revealed to the whole world. It says, just hang on. If you'll go through this process, there's so much joy on the other end because what this process is doing is it's refining you and it's getting rid of all of the things in you that aren't of him. The tests aren't there to destroy you. They're there to elevate you. The tests are important because the tests really do prepare you for, for what's next. This is where I was kind of thinking about uh, video games with, with my kids. I, this, this past few years, I've just been thinking about this testing thing, and I was in a conversation one day. I said, you know, it, it's kind of like when you're in a video game, and, and until you beat this level, you're not really ready 
for the next level. You really have to, to have the skill set to win here to go to the next one. And it was making me think about when my, my kids were little, they'd, they'd play different little video games on their iPad or whatever it was. And every single time, as soon as that level got hard, they just needed this little boost from me to push them over to the next level. So they'd hand me their iPad or they'd hand me whatever it was and I'd beat the level and then they'd get promoted and they'd go to the next level. Well, then all of a sudden, they would just start dying, like repeatedly, because the boss in the last level was equivalent to the regular mobs in the next level. How many gamers we got? I figured it was a few. Okay. Well, the rest of y'all just hang with me, because I live in a video game household. But it's like that sometimes. The levels are set so that you will have the skills that you need, and if you're able to go and beat the boss at this level, then you are able to go and be prepared for what's coming for the next level, it levels you up. And I think sometimes in our faith, we're so eager to go to the next level that we are willing to, to cheat our way to get there. Sometimes we're not honest with ourselves about the things that we're going through. Sometimes we're just trying to, to beg and borrow, Lord, just, just promote me, Lord. Just, just give me all the money and then I'll start tithing. And he's like, you don't tithe a dollar. You're not gonna tithe when you're a millionaire. And we're like, no, God, I promise, just let me get there. Right, God, just give me influence. Well, you don't do good things with the influence you have. But God, I know, but if I get the influence, then I'll really start doing right. And that's just not true. It's, it's really in the building of our character and the things that we will be able to sustain the calling. It's in that process of building character. I remember my kids had a, a version of a Super Mario, and in it, when you were going through the level, you'd all be in there together, there'd be three or four of us playing, and you were beating the level, and if it got really hard, you could actually put yourself in a bubble, and then the bubble would just go through the level. And so when I used to play with my, my kids, I would play this game, and, and it was hard, and they're like, you know, four and five years old, and we're going, and every time it got hard, I'd go, kids, bubble, bubble, and they'd all put their bubbles on, and I would continue to fight all the way to the finish line while they just rode in their little bubbles beside me. I think this is a season where the Lord is saying, guys, it's, we can't bubble anymore. We're going to have to expose ourselves and go toe-to-toe and put the house in the order and start to fight these battles that are on the inside. We got to go. We can't be bubbling anymore. And I don't know about you guys. Sometimes I want to bubble for my kids. I want to bubble for people in my life. I'm like, "Let let me let them use my grace to get where they're going. But God's saying, no, it's time for us all to get there. It's it's time to, to put the house in order because that test will prepare you for what's next. Another, another thing that that test does, the, the test will, will teach you. I think so often we learn from our failures. Man, failing is difficult and it's hard, but, but failure really is the best teacher. I was listening to a, a survey and it was about the top entrepreneurial, billionaire type of people in the world or successful people. I don't know what the qualifiers for success were. But it was like, what was the number one thing that the most successful people all had in common? It wasn't background, it wasn't history, it wasn't family dynamics, it wasn't any of that. The number one thing that all successful people had in common was, is they had learned to work through failure. I think that sometimes it's hard. I think it's hard to do in the natural, but I definitely think it's hard to do in the supernatural. I think sometimes when we feel like we've spiritually messed up or we spiritually, it's it's easy for us to quit the game. It's easy for us to feel shame and to walk away and to to turn our backs. But the Lord is saying, no, the failure is wonderful because the failure actually brings you to me so I can begin to teach you. Denver got on a kick for a while and she was playing the old Zelda map. So if we have any old video game nerds like James, you'll appreciate that. And so she played for hours and hours in the Zelda map and she just kept losing and losing stuff and things would happen. And one day we were playing and she had it on the road and then somehow it got disconnected and erased all of her inventory. And it was so painful for me. Every time that she lost, James had told her to give her hundred dollars if she beat the game. And every time she lost, it was so painful for me. I'm like, just give her the hundred dollars. Like she's hours in, James, what are you doing? And he kept saying, no. This is good for her. She's learning as she goes. And the truth is, you guys, we're just learning as we go. I 
don't care how old, how young we are, how many years we spent with the Lord or not, to the Lord, we're all just his children. And he's watching us learn as we go. And he's not so concerned about our failure as what we do when we fail. And what he wants us to do is come to him and keep going and and keep learning. Man, as she's going through the map, she's learning like, okay, now I know what this punch is like. So I gotta be prepared. I learned these new moves here. I've got these moves. I've got this new map memorized now. I've got these new items. Man, that's how life is. We, we mess up, we make mistakes, we say things we shouldn't say, we respond ways that we shouldn't. What progress is, is knowing when we mess up. Progress doesn't mean we don't mess up ever. We're all gonna mess up. But progress means that our heart is sensitive enough to know, I messed up. I really shouldn't have said that. I really shouldn't have responded that way. I, I really shouldn't have done that. I really shouldn't have acted like that. I really shouldn't have gave the birdie at the stoplight to the old grandma. She couldn't even see, right? That is progress. Because when we get to that place of recognition, it leads us to a place of true repentance that we just go, hey, Dad, I messed up. Can you help? And here the Lord is. He's such a good teacher. And he comes along beside us. And he doesn't chastise us. Instead, he's proud of us because he's going, I'm proud of you for coming back. Let's keep going through. Let's keep learning together. It says this in James. It says, consider it nothing but joy. Again, be excited about these tests, you guys. Consider nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, that whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, which leads to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let the endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect, completely developed in your faith and lacking nothing. The testing is helping us. The the failures are helping us. It's leading us. It says it produces endurance, leads to spiritual maturity. The tests really do teach us But here's something I'm beginning to really recognize about test. Not only do the tests teach us, but the tests really begin to show us. And what it begins to show us are areas in our life that just aren't quite healed and ready. Past hurts, past things that have happened, things that we've not let go of. I was watching Denver. She plays a lot of games, obviously. She was playing another game the other day. And in this particular game, there were like seven different boss fights at these castles and you'd go from castle to castle. And um, I watched a few guys play it and they would just like power through and every time their health would get low, they would just like keep playing. But I sat and I watched Denver play and what she would do is every time she would go to the boss fight and she'd get a little wounded, she'd get some dirt on her, she would go back into the game, they had these things called campfires. And if you go to the campfires, you could warm up and it would restore your health. And every time Denver would go into another battle, she would stop and let her health get restored. I I think this might be one of the most hard things that the body of Christ is suffering from, of all the things we're suffering from. And what's so uh, ironic about it is our faith in the gospel is built on coming to the Lord who heals our broken hearts. But sometimes we just get so caught up in what we have to do for the Lord and we're in such a hurry to be promoted, to be on that thing, to do the next thing, to be here, be there, show ourselves worthy, when instead we're not allowing ourselves time for the Lord to just heal us right where we are. A good father would never want you going into a battle when you're still hurting. But we think that, we think that to be good enough, we've got to just continue to do all these things and move so fast and achieve. And whether we're trying to achieve things in the spirit world or maybe in the natural world, we're trying to get promotions and this and that and that. We're trying to move so fast because the truth is we're just not healed in some areas. And sometimes guys, we just need to take a minute and allow the Lord to heal us. Not so quick to run through the fire and figure this thing out and win the day, but instead go, Lord, there's some areas and every time I go here, I end up failing because this thing happens. My insecurity shows its head, my weakness here, this, that, that. And the Lord goes, well, good, let's take a minute to let me heal you. And it's those campfires that, that bring us the healing of his, of his spirit. It's those, those healing wells. 
And church, we don't have to, we are gonna be on this journey with the Lord for our rest of our lives. There, there isn't some race that's more significant than your soul. And the Lord being able to see you and love you and be a good father. So yeah, sometimes we're going through seasons and it's a little testy, but sometimes those seasons just mean that we really need to slow down and give, give some stuff to the Lord. And I think a test is something that we, we all tend to go through if we're not all in one right now. So, so how, how do we pass the test? Well, I think it's good to know you're in one so that you can begin walking with the Lord and standing firm. The Bible says this, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. That's what Jesus was doing. He wasn't met by somebody in the wilderness that came to physically test him. He was met by the accuser. And oftentimes we think when we go through tests in the natural, everybody's against me, nobody sees me, blah, 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 blah. Your test isn't against the people at work or those people over there, your family or whoever that person is. That isn't your test. You're actually in a test with the accuser. And he's showing the Lord, he's going, oh, look, 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 look. And the Lord's going, no, 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 I'm gonna grab them. We're gonna walk together and we will get through this test. I will help them to be strong. How do you pass the test? You walk with the Lord through it. How, how, do, you, how do you pass the test? Well, I think it's important that we're clear on the goal. What's the goal? It's to be like him. It is, he's the target. And, and no matter what we wanna throw around and what excuses that we wanna make about whatever behavior we have or whatever choices we're making, Jesus is the target. He is. And that, that is what life is. It's us walking towards him every single day, becoming more like him in his nature. So as long as I know that's the goal, I'm always walking this way. The problem is, is when I change the target and it's no longer Jesus, I'm no longer making progress on this test. Jesus is the target. And it's important we know our goal is to be like him. And I think the, the last thing that's important about going through tests, and we've kind of talked about it a little bit, is just to stay humble and ask the Lord for help. We, we, we think that we have to just come so correct to the Lord and, and God wants us to have it all together. No, he actually wants us to come humbly before him. There's scripture after scripture. It says he blesses the poor in spirit. The blessing lies with those that go, God, I just keep failing, Lord. I need you. I lose my temper way too much, Lord. Can you show me is there more here? God, I get so jealous and, I, and so envious. Sometimes I'm so self-righteous. God, sometimes I just, I continue to have problems with everybody around me. It's my ego, it's whatever this thing is. That's where the Lord says, I will bless those people that are poor in their spirit and the ones that are going, God, I need you. I mean, the enemy has tricked us into thinking repentance is this thing that you come and you tell the Lord what you did and he punishes you. No, repentance is a thing that frees you. Repentance is a thing that you come and you go, dad, I messed up again. I'm so sorry, can you show me? And a good father goes, yeah, I'd love to teach you. Just walk with me a little longer and I'll keep teaching you. That's what it is. It's about coming before the Lord humbly. I think sometimes we, we, we put ourselves, just, we just put ourselves through it. And, and I watch the vacillation. I watch sometimes we, we go, oh yeah, I'm good just how I am. And then we swing from that to like, oh, God just doesn't even love me anymore. He doesn't care, I'm a failure. Like, no. He says, just, just come to me. We sang this morning, just come to the altar. That's where the Father's love is. That's where his open arms are, right at the altar. I'm gonna invite you guys to stand this morning. I wanna pray this morning for the, the testing seasons that we all face. I, I feel... There's, there's areas that the Lord, for each and every one of us, doesn't matter where we are and how experienced we are in the Lord, I think there's individual areas in our life that the Lord is saying, I want you to grow here. And it's funny with the Lord, because if you go, okay, yeah, God wants me to grow in my patience, and you start playing, God, make me more patient. God, make me more patient. He's gonna send you problems to test if you're patient. You're gonna hit every red light if you pray that. Why? Because he starts to send the test. That's part of it. But man, when we know that, we can go, okay, God, you're teaching me patience, so bring it. Bring all the red lights in the tri-state area. I'm going to get through this, Lord. Teach us, Lord.
So I'm gonna pray for that today. I'm gonna pray for a revelation of areas that God wants us to grow in. I'm gonna pray for repentance, that we're able to go to the Lord and go, I'm sorry, Lord, my ego is not in the way. I can say, yeah, I'm not perfect here. And then I'm gonna pray for, for us to have the strength to really stand and endure and to be able to walk with the Lord through the trials that we're facing. So Lord, we come to you today, God, just, just honored as always, God, to be in your house, to be able to even read your words today, Lord God. God, I thank you that, that you always know us and you always know what's best for us each and every season. So God, I just thank you and that we come to you today, God, going, this is a season, Lord, where we're all growing in our faith, Lord. We wanna, we wanna grow, we wanna grow in our maturity, we wanna grow in our walk with the Lord, God. And in this season, Lord, I thank you, God, that you're showing us areas in our life that, that we need your help in, Areas that maybe sometimes we don't always respond correctly or accurately, Lord God. God, I thank you that you reveal those areas of, for us in weakness. And God, I thank you with that revelation that comes with the, with, the holy, with the holy conviction, Lord, that we come to you and we go, Lord, help us with these areas, Lord. I don't wanna stay here stuck in my ways, God. You are the target and I, I want to be like you. So, so Lord, help me, Lord. Help me to learn how to, how to beat this level, Lord. Help to prepare me and show me the things that I need to do in my life to strengthen myself in the Lord as I walk with you each and every day. And God, I just thank you that, Lord, as, as, we, as we walk with you, God, that, that our faith is strengthened, our soul is strengthened. God, I thank you that in this season, Lord, that God, that you are just quickening us, Lord God, and giving us um, just, just the right mentality to be able to see the things that we need to change and work on those things. And, but God, more than anything, that we'll be able to trust in you, Lord. It's you that helps us through those seasons and it's you that strengthens us and teaches us. The Holy Spirit in this season, be our teacher, be our good, good Lord, God. We just love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Everybody said, amen.